Today we're going to learn how to pick up objects inside our 2D games. And if you followed the series up until now, you'll notice that I do already have a sprite ready. And we do also have a Cinemachine camera that is currently following the player. So if you don't know what a Cinemachine camera is, I do have a video which is the previous one that I made. Um, let's sort of go through what a Cinemachine camera is and how to set it up. So right now, all we have inside this game is we currently have a player that has a running animation. Uh, I do also have a jumping animation I created in you know, between episodes. The jumping animation is set up in the same way as the running animation is. So, you know, I don't think it's necessary to show how to do that. Let's go ahead and focus on the fact that we have a player that's running. And what I want to do is I want to be able to pick up something and actually have it be, you know, picked up by the player <laughs> inside my game here. So what I did to start with before I started this episode is I created a very basic um, 2D sprite of a firefly that we can pick up, which will then in a later episode be something that can actually allow for our character to light up, you know, because it's a light bulb and it makes sense that a firefly could maybe, I don't know, it probably doesn't make sense. He should be able to pick up the firefly and then he can light up at some point. So that's why I decided that we could pick up a firefly for this video here instead of a coin or something. If you want to make a coin, just make a coin, okay? It's 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 the same principle. You can make whatever you want and pick it up. So what I did is I went ahead and imported my sprites. As you can see, I have my sprites folder and inside the sprites folder, I have a objects folder and a player folder. So inside my player folder, I of course have my player sprite and inside my objects folder, I have my firefly. So what I can do is I can drag it into the scene and then you'll notice that I have a firefly that I can do something with inside my game. With the Firefly inside the scene, what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of scripts for it. I do have a script written already, uh, just to point it out, which is something that you are allowed to download for free inside the description. And this one script is not something that is necessary for any of this to work. It's just something that adds a little bit of flavor to the Firefly because I decided not on a coin, but a Firefly. So, you know, it has to move around and and do something so it's not just standing still in the air. So what I did was I put together a small script called Firefly Behavior. And if I were to drag that onto my Firefly and with that applied to my Firefly, if I were to play this game, you'll notice that my Firefly is actually moving around. Like it's rotating and it's just like kind of moving around in a small circle. Um, and then we can run over and pick it up at some point. So again, just to not confuse anyone, you don't need to have this script. You could also just have to coin or the firefly or whatever just be stationary in the middle of the air i just basically couldn't stand looking at a firefly not moving so i had to put together something so with this we need to have one more thing and that is going to be a firefly controller script that is actually going to control what is going to happen to this firefly when we run into it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go inside my scripts folder right click say create c sharp script and i'm going to call this one firefly controller with a capitalized F and a capitalized C. And inside here, we don't actually need to have any start function. We don't need to have an update function. We're just going to delete those. And what I'll do instead is I'm going to just sort of create a on trigger event that is going to say when something runs into this object, we want this thing to be triggered. And in order to do that, we need to do two things. We need to first of all have a collider on our Firefly. So if I were to go back inside Unity and go into my Firefly, and I'm just going to add a Circle Collider 2D. And I want to make sure it actually fits with the Firefly. So I will go ahead and just sort of decrease the radius a little bit. Now you can see the Firefly is not entirely centered on my screen here. And that might not happen for you. But if your, you know, sprite is not centered, you can just go into the sprite. Uh, which is my Firefly here. And I can just sort of center everything on the Y axis just to make sure everything is like it's supposed to be. And with that, you can now see that we have the Firefly center. Now for the radius of this collider, I'm just gonna set it to something like 0.15, just so it goes a little bit out from the body of the Firefly and a little bit into the wings. And I want to make sure that I set my is trigger to true to make sure that this is not going to be a collider that the player can interact with. So what I want to do with this trigger is I want to listen for the player and see if he's actually running in and touching the collider. And if so, I want to destroy this object. So what I can do is I can go ahead and say, I want to go inside my code and inside the controller, I want to say we have a on trigger 
enter2d method, which is actually a built-in method that we have inside Unity. And now just to sort of explain what is happening here, the collision that is inside the parentheses is actually the game object that hits the collider. So if the player runs in and hits the Firefly collider, the player object is going to be equal to the collision variable that we have in here. So what I can do is I can go inside my onTrigger into 2D method and I can run an if statement and say, I want to check for whatever collision and check if the collision game object has a specific tag. So right now, if the tag is equal to player, then I want to destroy this game object here. So I can say if collision dot tag is equal to player, then I want to destroy the game object that this script is attached to. So inside the curly brackets, I want to say destroy parentheses semicolon. And then I want to destroy game object, which is the current game object this script is attached to because we used a non capitalized G inside game object. So with this, I can now go inside Unity and you'll notice that this is not going to quite work just yet because if I were to play it and actually run into my little thing here, it's not actually interacting with it. It's just kind of flying around still. And that is because right now my player does not have a tag set to player. So if we were to do that, and we also need to make sure we actually attach the Firefly controller component to our Firefly inside our hierarchy. So we're to drag it up and attach it to it. Just make sure we have everything. So we have a Firefly behavior, which is the one you got from me. And then we also have a Firefly controller. So with that, let's go ahead and start playing the game. And you'll notice that when I run into it, it gets destroyed. And that is basically just how we can interact with, you know, picking up objects. Then what you would essentially do here is if you were to have a point system or something, when you destroy the object, or at least right before you destroy it, you would actually go ahead and add points to a point system or something. And that's something we might talk about in the next video or something when we want to start talking about the UI and how to set up a user interface inside our game. Um, so for now, we're just going to destroy the object and we will then later on create a point system that can actually work with this uh, little feature here. With this, what I can do is I can actually start building a couple of these. And one way to do that, because right now our Firefly game object inside the hierarchy has a couple of different components attached to it. The problem here is that I could technically essentially just duplicate my object a couple of times and then I would have more Fireflies. But if I'm creating a game that requires a lot of Fireflies and not just this scene here or this level, but in other levels, then I might want to create something called a prefab. Now, a prefab is basically a way for us to take a game object that is inside our hierarchy and save it inside our project with all the components and everything attached to it. So we don't have to redo anything if I were to just, you know, create a new scene or a new level and I have to put in this little object inside my hierarchy again. I wouldn't have to reattach all the game objects components. So what I can do is I can go ahead and create a prefabs folder inside my project. I'll just create it and call it prefabs. And inside my prefabs folder, I'm going to take my Firefly and I'm just going to drag him down into my prefabs. And I'll just say, I want to create a original prefab. And then we now have a prefab with all the game object components attached to it. And by the way, if you want to make changes to the prefab, let's say you want to add a component at a later point, you can just sort of double click the prefab. And then you can see we have it open over here with all the different components inside the hierarchy as well as everything included into the prefab that we can go back by clicking the little back arrow. And that is basically how we create a copy of one of the game objects we have inside the hierarchy with all the components attached to it. So what I can do now is I can just drag it in. So we have a couple of prefabs and I can just sort of like place them around the level. So I can have one up here. I might want to place one up here, another one up here. We can also create some platforms if we want to do that. So I'll just go ahead and right click. This will be a good point to have a prefab for platforms maybe. So I could create a square and just sort of adjust it so it has a different width. Let's put it to something like eight and let's put it to a height of 0 0.5. And then we can just sort of place it somewhere. So I'll put it over here. And we do want to make sure we also have colliders attached to these um, platforms. So we're going to say collider, I'm going to do box collider 2D. I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. So I'm going to say box collider 2D. 
And we also need to make sure we tag these properly because right now, if I were to jump on them, I can actually show you. If I were to jump up on it, you'll notice that, huh, I'm still jumping. Why am I not registering that I'm not jumping anymore? And that's because when we set up our jumping um, Boolean that actually checked if we were grounded on the ground, we said that it had to check for a platform tag on the game object that we're landing on. So if we were to go back inside these, I wanna make sure that I tag these as platform. And then if I were to play the game, you'll notice that now I can jump up and I can still jump, I can pick it up, pick this one up, jump down, pick one up and pick the last one up. And just like that, we now have a small mini game going <laughs> we can actually start picking up stuff. So with that, you basically know how to pick up objects and how to destroy the objects when you pick them up. And then, like I said, in a future episode, we'll actually start counting points when we pick these up. Or maybe we might want to have the light bulb light up or something for a certain amount of seconds whenever we pick one up. Um, you know, depending on what kind of game we're making. So for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next video.